are evangelical Christians particularly susceptible to conspiracy theories and conspiratorial thinking? Why might that be the case? If so, and what might we do about it? Well, these are just a few of the ideas that are explored at great length in this collection of essays called QAnon, Chaos, and the Cross. Let me tell you what I thought about it. Welcome to Books and Big Ideas, what I'm reading, what I'm thinking about, with Joel Wentz. All right, I have here a copy of QAnon, Chaos, and the Cross, Christianity and Conspiracy Theories uh, from Erdman's. Thank you to Erdman's for the review copy of this book. Uh, this is a collection of essays that's edited by Michael Austin and Gregory Bach. Um, so let me tell you, take, take you through my typical format, the main idea, the research, readability, and the reasonableness of this book as a whole. Um, okay, so uh, the main idea is a little bit... Um, a little bit hard to wrap your mind around because it's a collection of essays that it's it's exploratory in nature. So, essentially, it's it's a it's a, it's a long exploration of lots of different aspects of conspiracy theories, conspiratorial thinking. There's uh, exploration of intellectual virtues like intellectual humility. There's explorations of epistemology. Uh, there's a little bit of historical explanations. Um, in in terms of some essays get into specific conspiracy theories that have propped up over the past. Uh, and then there's, of course, there's a lot of cultural studies kind of going on in some terms of some discussion of why exactly certain conspiracies are attractive to, potentially attractive to communities of evangelical Christians. Um, so it's just a wide-ranging, multifaceted exploration of kind of lots of subtopics related to um, the notions of conspiracy theories. Um, some of them are very, some of them are very obvious. Um, some of them are very surprising. Um, it's a wide range. It's a wide range. Um, so that's kind of the main idea of this book. The uh, research behind it is also ranging um, based on the type of person that was writing each essay. So some, the, the, a wide, um, I, I don't think it's quite a majority, but a significant proportion of the contributors are philosophers or philosophy academics or philosophy professors. Um, and I noticed that those essays tended to be, probably to no, no one's surprise, those essays tended to be quite a bit more rigorously like researched and, and backed up. Um, there's a couple essays that get pretty deep into Aquinas, for example, um, in, when it comes to discussing intellectual virtue, uh, and they tended to be really well, um, really, really well backed up, especially the, the more academic contributors. Um, there are also essays that are contributed by pastors um, or people who are more on the kind of "Quote unquote popular end of the the writing spectrum that were a little bit less heavily researched, but it really varies depending on um, depending on the type of person that was contributing per essay. I will say there were a few studies, uh, like any collection of essays, this one this one tips into repetitiveness a few times, uh, and there were a couple studies. There's one study in particular that talks about uh, the numbers of people in congregations that uh, believe some sort of conspiracy theories. Like that study gets referenced so many times in so many different essays. Um, there's a lot of repetition of certain like Pizzagate and stuff like that. So so some of the some of the research does get a little bit a little bit repetitive, but that's a little bit par for the course with a collection of essays like this. Um, Okay, uh, the readability. I'm gonna sound a little bit like a broken record. This is a collection of essays, so everything is everything is ranging. The, the the readability ranges from super breezy, super easy to read to a little bit more a little bit more tough to get into. Now, uh, that being said, I would say overall, if you if you put a range of readability uh, around, uh, like kind of a parameters of readability around the whole book, the whole thing skews towards more readable than not. Um, all the essays are pretty short, um, and there's a whole bunch of them, but they're all pretty short, which helps with the readability. Um, and I think the editors did a good job at kind of skewing everything towards a little bit more of an accessible style. So while there are a few that get a little bit more deep in the weeds on some, especially some epistemology and philosophy, not, nothing is, in my view, too, um, too heady. Uh, so pretty readable, pretty readable book overall. Uh, okay, now my reaction to this. So I really appreciated this book. That's the, like the, the big takeaway. I really appreciate this book. I learned quite a bit from some, especially the more historical uh, essays. Um, and I'm going to highlight a couple of the essays in particular that I really appreciated. Um, I will say that um, on the whole, I'm really glad I read this book. There are some essays that just stand out far and above the others, in my opinion. Some of them were, like I said, a few bordered on repetitive. Uh, a few of them were dare I say, a little bit simplistic in their tone and, the, and in the sense that they were bringing up points that I think um, didn't necessarily need to be in this book. They, there were some essays that could have been trimmed out, uh, tightened up 
the whole thing as, as, as a whole. But there are some real, real gems in this. In particular, I'm going to look at the table of contents because um, I have a few of them marked. So the cost of debunking conspiracy theories was fantastic. Can We Trust Science by Garrett DeWeese was a, was a really excellent discussion of that topic. Um, the uh, It's Much Worse Than You Think um, by J. Aaron Simmons and Kevin Carnahan. That, for me, that essay alone is worth the price of the book. Honestly, it's, it's, in my opinion, that essay is that good. I thought that was ex an extraordinary argument uh, in that one in particular. Um, uh, there was also a good essay near the end called They Are Coming for the Children by Michelle Penchuk. Uh, the one that I didn't mention at the beginning, um, Scott Culpepper is the one who wrote The Cost of Debunking Conspiracy Theories. I thought that was a great essay. Um, the Religious Rhetoric of QAnon by Chase Andre was also a really excellent essay. So these are real gems that are that are very, very... If you're interested in this topic, if you're interested, if, especially if you're a pastor or a ministry leader or kind of a person that's leading a community that's been affected by conspiracy thinking, those essays are so, so good, and I'm so glad that they are at least collected in this book. Um, there's also a lot of essays that I would say are good, but they just needed a little bit more time. I think, to be developed. So an essay like Faith, Reason, and Conspiracy Theories, uh, The Greatest Conspiracy Ever, um, A City Divided, uh, these are all, and, and there's there's others. Um, those are just a few examples of, of essays that bring up really good points, and then the essay ends. And I just thought, oh, I would have, I actually, in this case, would have liked a few of those to be given some more pages to develop in a little bit more depth the things that they're teasing at. Um, so I think this is a very common issue with collections of essays. I, I have a, my mileage varies with essay books like this. Sometimes I love them. Sometimes I have a little bit of a tortured reaction to them because I frequently think like, well, I would have cut out these five essays and made these other five ones longer and then put these five at the beginning. You know, like, but that's just, again, that's, that's the editor's prerogative. If I, I suppose if I'm the editor of an essay collection one day, then maybe I'll finally be able to make those decisions. Uh, and then someone else will react the way I just reacted to, to that one. Um, but that being said, I think this book is, it's, consistently thoughtful. Uh, I love that the philosophy is given a kind of foregrounded in the content. Um, I love the why. I do love the wide range. Uh, I love that science is talked about, that epistemology is talked about, that history is talked about, um, that theology is talked about. It's, it is kind of all bundled up here. So on the whole, on the whole, this book is very valuable. There are some stand, absolute standout essays that I would say are like must reads for the topic. Um, and there's others that are just going to be, your mileage is going to be going to vary with them depending on how much you've read about this topic already or thought about it or reflected on it or not. Um, so those are my thoughts on the book from QAnon, uh, from QAnon, the book from Erdman's called QAnon, Chaos and the Cross, edited by Michael Austin and Gregory Bach. Um, if this is of interest to you, this topic is of, of interest to you, it's probably worth picking up um, given everything that I've just talked through. So um, those are my thoughts. And as always, thank you for watching.